In this video, we're going to spend 15 minutes rebuilding this website, youriwebalternative.com, in RapidWeaver. Because we're going to be doing this so quickly, I'm not going to be able to go into great detail like I would normally do with my videos at rapidweaverclassroom.com. But in this case, we're just going to get a general idea of how powerful RapidWeaver is, how flexible it is, and how it can be used to quickly build great websites. So to begin, let's switch to RapidWeaver. And the first thing we need to do is add a page to our new project. RapidWeaver has a lot of different types of pages that do different things. We're going to be using stacks for most of our pages because it's so flexible. Next, I need to choose a theme. RapidWeaver comes with hundreds of themes to choose from. And so I'm going to choose this theme to start with. And then we're going to go in and set up our website. And so first, I need to put in some information here, such as the title of my website and the slogan and footer. And so what I'm doing is copying and pasting a lot of this content because I've already um, pre-built that content and so this will just save us time as we move along here I'll come in and customize all of these settings so I've got title slogan footer and then the actual web address of the website now I'm ready to customize the styles of the themes. I'm going to go into the page inspector under styles where I can make some adjustments. Now every theme has different types of styles that let you change the way it looks. So I'm going to make a couple of adjustments here and then I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then finally I'm going to add a header to the top of the page. So I'm going to drag this image I created called header and put that into the resources of RapidWeaver. So let's go ahead and preview and we will now see that we have a layout that looks very much like what we saw online. So now it's time to start adding content to our page. So so we are using stacks for this type of page and stacks let you be very flexible in how you design and lay out content on a page. And so I'm going to start with a header at the very top and I'm going to go ahead and paste in some content there that I've created and then I'm going to drag a two column stack onto the page because I want to use columns. Inside of those columns I'm going to have a header on each column so I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to add some text as well underneath each header and so again I will copy that. Now I want to go into my header and I want to add a background. And so I'm going to come over here on the right and choose a tiled image for the background. Then up here in the stacks media, I'm going to choose an image and drop that into that space. And so that adds a purple background behind my header. I'm going to do the same thing for the one on the right. And then I want to create some space to make it a bit larger. So I'm going to add some uh, padding here. So I'm going to make that 15 pixels. So Stacks lets you adjust a lot of fine details in order to make things look exactly the way you want them to. And so I'm going to copy and paste some more content here into these um, stacks. So if you'll bear with me for just a second, I'm going to go over um, off screen and copy some content and then come back and just simply paste it for each one. And then once we have that put together, we will take a look in, at the preview to see how this is shaping up. So I'm almost done with the content. Come in here. And then I want to add some space up at the top. And so I'm going to come over to the detailed margin and just add margin on top, about 30 pixels. So let's preview that. And we will see that we have our headline. And then we've got some content with our columns. And so that's shaping up pretty well. Let me add some rounded corners to the tops of those headlines. And so I'm going to come here, choose detailed rounding, and just give a top left and top right five pixels of rounding. And so we have a nice rounded effect just on the top of those boxes. So next we're going to be adding a video to the website and so I'm going to look for a video stack here. We'll use an HTML5 video stack and drop it below. And so I want to also separate this a bit by adding some margin to the top. So I'll add about 35 pixels just to push it down a bit. And then we'll scroll down where we need to tell it where to find our video. So I'm going to set a link and I'm just going to point to one that is at Rapid Weaver Classroom. And then I will um, call this stacks.mp4. That is my video file that we're going to be using. And then I'm going to add a poster image, and that's going to give me the image that you see to start with on the page. So I'll drop that here into that setting. And then the next thing I want to do is go ahead and preview. So basically what we have right now is we have our content, we have um, our header, we have the content here, and then we have our video. It's actually trying to play, so I could tell it not to automatically play simply by unchecking autoplay. And so we are done with the home page of this website. So let's go ahead and build out the structure of the rest of the website. I'm going to add some more pages to my website. But before I do that, I want to save the styles that I've created here so that I can use them quickly on all the other pages. So I'm going to save my style and I'm going to call it iWeb Alternative. And save that and then when I go in and add another stacks page, 
I can quickly go into the styles of the page and then drop down and choose the iWeb alternative style that automatically applies everything to this page that I had on the others. And so at this point I can come in and name that page and I'm going to call this one Why Rapid Weaver. So this page lists the reasons or some of the reasons why Rapweaver is a great platform for building a website. And so I'm going to use a stack on this page called Left Floating Image, and this will allow me to put an image on the left with floating text on the right. And so I've got a button or a, um, a check mark that I want to be using on this, and so I'm going to simply drag and drop that into the page, and then I'm going to copy and paste some content here. And so there is my left floating image with my content, and I'm going to copy this repeatedly throughout um, several times because the layout of this page is such that it is the same content repeating just with different wording and so I'm going to then add some detailed margin to the top of each line like this and so I can simply come down and add that margin and then that will create some good spacing between each point um, just to give it a better visual flow and so I'm going to do that and then I would simply go in and add my content to each one. I've got the check marks already. I would just go in and swap out the content. I'll do a couple just so that it looks a bit different as we scroll down the page. But you can see that it's pretty straightforward in adding um, a, an image on the left side and then having text that flows to the right. And so I'll go ahead and just customize those few to begin with and then we'll go ahead and wrap up this page because it's pretty much the same content repeating down the page. But before we move on to the next page, let's go ahead and preview this one so that we can kind of get an idea of what this looks like and so we can see our bullet points, if you will, going down the page like so. So let's move on and then we will go and add another page, Stacks once again, and I'm going to call this Design Showcase. And then we'll go again into the styles for the page and we'll simply apply that iWeb alternative style so that it has all the same styles and then we'll start adding our content. So this page is a portfolio of sites that demonstrates the ability of RapidWeaver to create really cool looking websites. And so what we're going to be using here is a portfolio stack that creates a nice effect for those um, uh, demonstrations of the different websites that we're going to list. I'm going to add a header above these. And so we'll go here, let me grab the content of that header and paste it in. And then we will use this portfolio stack, which is simply drop zones for images. And inside of, of those, we simply drop the images of the different websites that I want to feature. And so I'll just grab a few here. And then we would go in and we would give those titles and then the links to those. And so, for example, on this one on the right, this is my website, Rapid Weaver Classroom. And then I would go in and place the link text. And so that's the website address for this one. And then I would highlight that link. And then I would go up and click on the link button and create a link. I want to open that in a new window and set that link. And so this is kind of the overall layout and structure of the portfolio. I'm going to duplicate this um, because I do have um, several lines and rows of content there. And maybe I want to separate that a bit again. So I'll give it some detailed margin and apply maybe 25 pixels between each row. So I'll do that for these two. And then let me go ahead and do that for the top one as well, just to create some spacing, because spacing is always good. And then I'll go ahead and preview this. And so you can see that very quickly we were able to add some images, and then this has a nice sliding effect for the images with the link. And so for this one here is the link to Rapweaver Classroom. I could simply click on that, and it would open a new window to take me to that website. And so you can see how quickly it was for me to add that. Just drop my images in, define the text, and the link. While I'm at it, let me show you the menu. This is starting to develop now that we've added some pages. We have our home page and then two other pages, and then they'll continue to be added to this menu as we go along. So I'm going to go back into the edit view, and we're going to add another page, once again stacks, and then this one is going to be called Getting Started. And so this is just some information for those that need to get started with Rapidweaver. I'm going to begin with another header, and so let me drop my text into that spot. I'm just going to copy and paste once again. And then we're going to be using um, some two column stacks again, and this time we're going to be putting text on one side and an image on the other. Not only that, but I'm going to split this column differently. It's 50-50 right now, but I can come down and I can assign a different split to the column. And so I'll do something a little bit closer to 65-35. And then I want to drop an image into the right side. So let me grab an image 
I'm gonna grab this one, which is Rapid Weaver, and then I'm going to drop um, or paste my text into um, this uh, spot right here. And so I'm gonna go and edit and paste as plain text, and then I want to send a link to Rapid Weaver 5. So I'll click on the Add Link button, and then type in the website address for Rapid Weaver there, which is RomacSoftware.com. And then I can link this as well, but I'm gonna save myself some time and continue on. I'm going to add a small um, light border across the bottom. And so I'm gonna choose a color that's very subtle. I'm gonna drag this up to a very light gray. And then I'm going to apply that detailed border just on the top, and it's gonna be one pixel thick. And so that's gonna put a border at the bottom of this stack up against the image, and then the text will sit on the left side. Now I'm gonna duplicate this, and it would be basically the same way to build each um, different piece of content here. I can come in, I can delete this image, and I can drag a different image in really quickly. And so let me do that. I'll go ahead and customize this next one as well, um, again with some content. So let me paste in a, a bit of different content there, and then you can get the picture as we continue on. So let me add some margin across the top, again because I want to create some good spacing in between each one of these. Let me do a bit more this time. I'm going to do 45 pixels there. I'll do 45 for this one. And so you can see, especially if you're going to be using the same type of content, it's really easy to have it repeat um, by duplicating and then just changing out the content to fit what you need it to be. And so this is our finished page. You can see the information here on the page with our lines and then our um, content kind of coming out of the line with the image. And so that is the getting started page. Now we're ready to add another page to the project, so I'm going to choose a stacks page once again. This is actually going to be the last stacks page that we create for this project, and we'll call this Rapid Weaver Tutorials. I'm going to go into stacks, and we're going to start with the header across the top, and then I'm going to go ahead and drop in a two column stack below that. And for this, we are going to again split it. I'm going to put the split to the left to where it's smaller on the left side. I'm going to drop in my logo for Rapid Weaver Classroom, and then on the le on the right side, drop in some text, and let me go ahead and grab that text text and I've already gone ahead and linked it and so it's pasted in there. I'm going to add a line above and below so I'm going to go to the border color once again, do a light gray and then give a border on the top and on the bottom and then I also want to create some space um, in between everything so I'm going to do some padding and then we will create padding on the top of about 20 and on the bottom about 20 so that'll space that out. Next I want to add three more columns and so I'm going to grab a three column stack and here we're going to do something a bit more unique. We're going to create a light box window that's going to contain video and so I'm going to drop in a light box video, uh, a light box stack to start with and I want to launch that light box with an image so I'm going to drop an image into that space and then in the bottom one I'm going to use a YouTube um, stack which is going to be used to place a YouTube video inside of the light box and so I'm going to grab that YouTube stack drop that in and then I just need to create a few customizations the first thing to do is add the ID for the video and YouTube that I want to use so I'll paste that in and then I can um, just uh, customize a few things here I'll leave pretty much everything as is and so at this point, I've got um, a caption that I can add. And so let me say 15-minute uh, website, which is the video that I'm creating right now. And then we could um, go ahead and duplicate this across the three columns for the sake of time and then preview. So here's the page. You can see that we've got the space in the middle that I created. I never did customize the headline, but that's okay. We'll see below that we've got um, the three lightbox stacks that we added. And so if I click on any of these, that will open up the lightbox window. And here is my video. And so I can play it right here from the lightbox, which was very easy to create. We just added the image, added the um, stack that we wanted to be inside the lightbox with the video, and that was it. So that was very easy to set up. Of course, I could go in and customize um, each one individually. Um, but for the sake of time, we will go ahead and move on to the blog. So let me go in and add a new page, which is a blog page. Rap Weaver has its own blog page, although you can use WordPress or Google's blogger service to create blogs as well. And so what we'll do here is simply start with a new blog entry. And so I'll just say, welcome to my website. And then I could go in and start typing content into this space. Now, Rapid Weaver has some great blogging 
um, abilities with categories, with tags, with creating permalinks for SEO purposes. And so there's a lot here that you can do. You can even add comments. There's all kinds of options available um, through the uh, page settings for the blog. I will want to go into styles and apply my custom style to the page. And then, um, of course, I could finish out my blog posts with formatting tools across the bottom. I could drop images into the post if I wanted to, to to add images to the blog. And then once I've done all that, I would be ready to preview. And though it will look a bit plain if I preview it this way, so let me go ahead and just paste in um, some content so that we have something more to look at. And then we'll go ahead and preview the page. And we can see here um, is our blog. And so we've got our title and we've got the entry. Could use some formatting, but it's fine to start with. And then we've got some categories and archives and different um, things along the sidebar over here. And so that is the blog page in Rapid Weaver. And this is pretty straightforward to set up, um, as you can see through here. Finally, let's add a contact page. Rapid Weaver comes with a contact form, and so that will create a form on our website. We can customize that with any types of fields that we want. We'll go into the page inspector, and we need to tell it where to send to. And so I'll put an email address there to, so that it will send to me. And then I want to go in and again define my style. And so I'll do that. And then that's pretty much all that we have to do. We're going to collect the basics, name, email, subject, and message. Like I said, we could add more fields and pretty much any type of fields we'd like, but Rapid Weaver will um, build that form for us in preview. And before I do that, I want to simply type in contact for the page name, and then we can go preview the page. And so here's our contact form page. We can see it's a simple form with our fields to enter our information and then submit with the submit button. So you can see it's real simple to set up a contact form in Rapid Weaver, and the contact form page makes it real easy to do that. So at this point, we've built out all of the pages of our project. We can go through Rapid Weaver's preview and view any pages that we've developed simply by clicking through the menu. We're going through and looking at the content on each page. This acts just like a browser so that we can see what we have built here. And so that will go ahead and wrap up this tutorial. I hope that you get a good idea of what can be accomplished with Rapid Weaver simply by looking at what was done here with this project. I encourage you to check out your iWebAlternative.com if you are an iWeb user that is interested in Rapid Weaver. And of course, Rapid Weaver Classroom is my website where I provide training on Rapid Weaver in great detail including a lot of its add-ons such as plugins and stacks and themes. And so please be sure to check out rapidweaverclassroom.com. Thank you for watching.